Hey guys, this is James Ryan with another lesson for you all. Uh, what I want to show you today is how to play a lick in different positions on the neck um, to get different tones and just to get to know your neck and your scales a little bit better. So I'm going to show you first of all a little lick in the key of G and show you how you can play it in four different positions on the neck. It goes like this. So it's unlikely that you're going to end up doing it in that last position, but more just to make the point that you can play in different positions and get these different tones. So this is something that I definitely recommend. So let me show you what the actual lick is um, and in the different spots. So we're starting with the bend on the 8th fret of the 1st string. It's just a semitone bend. Then we go to 6 and then 8 on the 2nd string. Just a nice classic blues lick. Then the next position, we're going to start the bend on the 2nd string at the 13th fret. Then go to 11 and then 12 on the third string. That's one of my favorite sounding notes. That Something about the G at the 12th fret. So, really great tone in that position. And uh, without getting too heavily into scales, that one is based around the root five pentatonic shape. So. Okay, the next one is starting with a bend on the third string this time at the 17th fret. Um, and this shape looks identical to the first one, except on a different group of strings. So, so bend at 17, then play 15, and then 17 on the fourth string. So it looks exactly the same as. You can hear how they sound drastically different. A lot more snap there a much warmer sound there and uh, if you want to try it you can do this last one which is bending on the fourth string right up on the 22nd fret looks like the same lick again as those last two so um, it's just getting to know your neck better so once you've worked out those little patterns oh my god the phone's ringing private caller leave it so then you can just take that group of notes and come up with different licks and move to the different positions again. So here's another one, for example. So, starting in the same position, the first one. Oh, go away now. There we go. So starting on the eighth fret, on the first string, I'm gonna do a little hammer on and pull off to the ninth, and then pull off to six. So. So it's utilizing the blues note again, and then finishing on the 8th fret of the 2nd string. Nice snappy sound there. Then we can move to the 2nd position that we used earlier. So starting on the 13th fret, we do that same position, that same lick for that string. We're going to copy it to the 2nd string. And then end on my favorite G note there. Then we're going to go up and do the same thing starting on the third string, 17th fret. Again, this will look exactly the same as the first position. And up here it belongs to the, the classic and most popular um, first shape of the pentatonic or blues scale. Which is the... because it's a bit far too high. So you get the idea. Um, and from there, obviously, you can extend and, and go off into the scale, do some improvising. But the fact that you're starting in a different position means that you're going to come up with something new and interesting. Try it out. Another side of this would be to take a certain lick and see if you can play the same lick, but using a different shape 
or a different position. And this is really cool. This really stretches you and you'll come up with some new patterns um, that might work better for you. So if we do that same lick that we just looked at. Okay, another way we could play that would be, <clears throat> excuse me, to start with the first finger at the eighth fret and then do the hammer on pull off with your first and second finger like that. Then go to the second string, 11th fret and 8th fret. Exactly the same lick. Slightly different sound and it feels different to play just because the notes fall in a different spot. This one's really good to alternate pick. You know, they just feel different. Um, how else could you do this? You could go do as a little tapping lick. Or if you wanted to stretch those darn fingers out, you could go So it's just a matter of finding the same notes in different positions and experimenting with that. Um, and you'll find in some places you can do a really cool lick like that one, just a straight descending of those notes using tapping. Now you couldn't do that in either of those other positions. Sound like Steve Ive Crossroads. Oh! Um, you know, it just doesn't work there. Likewise here. So certain positions are great for a type of phrasing. Other positions might work out to be better for a, you know, a faster version of that lick. So experiment with that and we'll get stuck into a little bit more at some time.